Now, there are many ways in which kids learn. Maybe they're really good test takers or they thrive with a hands on approach. When it comes to social studies at Columbus Academy, one teacher's go to method puts her students in the driver's seat. So I'm a big believer in delivering the material to the kids in a variety of ways and project-based learning is just one of those ways, one of those methods. Project-based learning or PBL isn't a new concept, says Laura Miller, but it has been gaining in popularity. Everything else is kind of up to you the best way you think you can put together all those pieces to tell a story. So project-based learning is when you give kids an extended amount of classroom time to work towards some sort of goal. It could be solving a problem, it could be creating some sort of product, could be trying to meet some sort of challenge. And at the end of that, what we find is that they actually engage in the material more in depth because they kind of can, can take ownership over their own learning. The Columbus Academy 8th grade social studies teacher says the concept worked so well for her when she was in school that she carried it into her own lesson plans. Today's assignment centered around the Vietnam War, complete with a special guest. So today there was a Vietnam vet here, right? That's correct. So um, Amy Seymour is our eighth grade language arts teacher. Her father um, actually fought in the Vietnam War and was really kind to come in and share his experience with the kids, answer all kinds of questions, and sell, tell some pretty amazing stories too. 365 days there, and you start counting the days when you want to get, come back home. For the students' final project on the war, they'll create a mini documentary. They have between five and ten minutes to pick a topic that either they want to become an expert in and kind of teach us through that documentary format or to try to tell a story. So I've got kids focusing on everything from post-traumatic stress disorder to the environmental impacts of napalm to telling the story of a specific veteran um, and it's really generated by the kids and their own interests. And this is far from the first project they've been assigned this year. Here's what they had to do before their annual trip to Washington, D.C. Not only do they have to pass the citizenship test, because I think that's kind of an important thing for them to have to do before, they actually each create a monument based on, again, sort of their own interests. It could be um, a person they want to commemorate. It could be a cause or a historical event tied to our curriculum. Um, and they either digitally or physically create that monument. So then when we go and we tour um, Washington, D.C. and see the real monuments, I think they have a little bit more of a sense of what goes into creating these things. There were also projects based on World War I and the Cold War, each with specific tasks meant to bring the kids a level of understanding they may not otherwise have. So we kind of together generated this project where we simulate the conditions leading up to World War I and then we use, try to use diplomacy to um, prevent the outbreak of the war. Um, so it gets intense and kids are representing different countries and they're all secret messages pa passed back and forth. Um, but at the end of it, because the kids have experienced kind of many of the different causes, the nationalism and the militarism and the alliances, the sort of web of alliances, then they can really truly understand the actual history of it. And the Cold War, what was that one like? It is a day-long, grade-wide mock trial in our theater where we bring back a panel of alumni judges um, to actually judge the three different cases the kids present. So um, I give them the framework, I give them the chronology, I give them the background, and then they pick roles, they decide which cases they're going to put on trial, they decide which historical characters they're going to represent, and how they're going to present each of these cases. Um, and then ultimately it's up to the judges to decide um, which team wins in each of the three cases. It's fun, interactive, and impactful. And all worth it, Laura says, when she gets feedback like this. It's awesome when I have a family come to me and say, my kid was talking about your class at the dinner table last night. I love that. To me, that's one of the best reactions when the classroom material can go home. And for those parents at home right now, here's a bit of advice for the next time your child has a question or a yearning to learn more. And just giving them the time and the space to discover and to make mistakes and to you know go back and then try again, um, I think can be really valuable. And there's that moment, I think, when it clicks and they get really interested. And then at that point, as a teacher or as a parent, you can kind of just step back and, and let them go, which is exciting when you can do that. Well, you can learn so much more about Columbus Academy by heading to their website. It's columbusacademy.org or call their admissions office 614-509-2220 to schedule a visit.